about peripheral blood smear we discussed about the how to make the peripheral blood smear and how to uh, examine the rbcs in the previous video now in this video we will di be discussing about wbc examination so how to examine whenever we have a peripheral blood smear okay so we have three parts we have head body and tail so you have head you have your bo the body of the smear and the tail of the smear so how to examine is whenever you have to examine the wbcs you have to examine on the junction between the body and tail because the cells like if you go towards the tail you will have more of neutrophils and if you go towards the body you will have more of lymphocytes so you have to take a proper area to examine the wbcs in the smear that is the body tail junction now it is examined un under 40x going to firstly how does a neutrophil look like we will discuss the normal morphology of all the wbcs so all the wbcs are divided into granulocyte and a granulocyte now granulocyte that means they have some cytoplasmic granules present so uh, the granulocyte will be your neutrophil you will be having your eosinophil and the basophil these are the mainly the granulocyte which have cytoplasmic granules present then normally the a granulocyte do not have any granules present they are such as your lymphocyte and the monocyte going to firstly the neutrophil now neutrophil has a average size of around 14 to 15 micron the cytoplasm now cytoplasm whenever we will discussing the wbc we will discuss how the cytoplasm look like how the nucleus look like now cytoplasm is slightly eosinophilic and has multiple small fine granules so one thing important is the granules here are very fine and they are multiple and very small the fine part is important now the nucleus they have two to four lobes therefore they are also known as polymorphonuclear leukocytes okay so if in any report you see pmns that means polymorphonuclear uh, uh, leukocyte these are also neutrophils only so nucleus uh, has around two to four lobes and mostly majority will have three uh, so here you can see the nuclear lobes are so here they are like this okay so you have multiple nuclear lobes then there is something known as bar body or drumstick in females so in the, some neutrophils you will see like this this is a neutrophil and there will be attached a drumstick like thing okay so this is seen in only females this is known as bar body and it represents inactivated x chromosome now going to how does the eosinophil look like eosinophil is slightly larger than the neutrophil and the cytoplasm is very characteristic now the one most important thing is the cytoplasm and the granules now the granules here if you can see they are slightly reddish they are not pinkish they are orange red granules they are said orange red granules or brick red granules and they are slightly coarser than the neutrophils the nucleus now characteristically is mostly bilobe you can have uh, three lobed also uh, eosinophil but characteristically it is bilobed okay like a spectacle okay like a spectacle okay so it is bilobed and the use the uh, it will be orange red in color now going to basophil now basophil is slightly smaller in size and here characteristic is the cytoplasmic granules which are deep purple and they are very coarse okay they are very large granules okay they are around uh, very very large granules and they completely cover the nucleus it completely obscuring the nucleus this is the characteristic of basophil now how does a monocyte look like now monocyte is the largest of all the lympho uh, leukocytes okay so in the tissue this same thing is known as macrophages so don't confuse in tissue we call the monocytes as macrophages cytoplasm of the uh, monocyte now it is a granulocyte so it will be a granular and the cytoplasm color is blue gray okay it is blue gray in color or slate gray in color and will have a ground glass like appearance the nuclei will be like kidney or slightly clefted okay no other uh, if it is not till the uh, kidney it will be slightly clefted now going to 
lymphocyte now lymphocytes are further divided into small lymphocytes and large lymphocytes now majority of the lymphocytes they fall under small lymphocytes they are very small in size they are the smallest of all the leukocytes they are around 7 to 8 micron and in the previous video also we discussed the nucleus of the lymphocyte we use as a comparison for the rbcs rbc size so the nuclei in the case of small lymphocyte is almost it covers the whole cell okay it will have high nc ratio the nucleus will almost cover the high all cell and there will be just thin rim of deep blue cytoplasm the cytoplasm color will be deep blue in case of large lymphocyte it will have slightly abundant cytoplasm okay this uh, nucleus will be almost similar but this uh, cytoplasm will be abundant now going to what is differential leukocyte count why we need differential leukocyte count so we want to see different proportion of leukocytes expressed as percentage that means if we count 100 of the wbcs okay we want to know how much are the neutrophils how much are the lymphocytes how much are the monocytes and how much are the eosinophils like that okay because there are certain conditions in which if the neutrophils increase then we come at a certain diagnosis if eosinophils we come at a certain diagnosis so different a relative proportion of all the different leukocyte which are expressed as a percentage okay so this is the differential leukocyte in which we will count 100 wbcs and then take out how many are the neutrophils and therefore that will be the percentage now going to the absolute leukocyte count what is now what is the absolute leukocyte count now absolute leukocyte count is the percentage of the leukocyte which we got on dlc into the total leukocyte count that we come up with the new bus chamber so that will give the absolute number of the lympho, uh, leukocytes now going to firstly neutrophilia so what do you uh, understand by the term philia whenever we are using the term philia that means there will be increase in that cells okay and whenever we are using the word pinea that means we are seeing the decrease in that cells so neutrophilia that means there is increased neutrophils so normally the neutrophils in the differential count come out to be 40 to 75 percent and if they are more than 7500 microliter that is the absolute count it falls under neutrophilia so causes can be there is physiological causes such as in exercise pregnancy then you have certain infections such as acute bacterial infections in abscess if the patient has abscess pneumonia meningitis septicemia any acute pyogenic infection any acute bacterial infection will cause increase in neutrophils then sudden shock to the uh, body such as in case of burns injury myocardial infarction again neutrophil will rise then acute blood loss certain myeloproliferative disorders so these are all the causes of neutrophilia very uh, common cause is the acute bacterial infections there is something known as leukemoid reaction now in the leukemoid reaction what happens is the wbc count it increases very much the total wbc count it is around the range of 30000 to 50000 or more so this leukemoid reaction in this the neutrophils they increase very much in response to any severe septicemia severe burns so the patient the body goes into leukemoid reaction here you will see certain immature forms of the neutrophils and neutrophils in general will also increase then going to what is neutropenia as it, i told you penia stands for if it is less so neutropenia stands if the neutrophil count will be low so if it is less than 2000 microliter per microliter so the causes here can be certain infections now infections the causes will now change there are certain infections such as typhoid tuberculosis septicemia certain septicemia in that neutrophils decrease also so viral infections such as influenza measles infectious mononucleosis now megaloblastic anemia aplastic anemia here there is defective production of the uh, neutrophils itself so therefore in this also it will decrease certain drugs like such as antibiotics anti-cancer drugs radiation hypersplenism hypersplenism this the size of the spleen is increased so that it will 
phagocytosis the neutrophils so they hypersplenism then there is something known as cyclic neutropenia so these are the causes of neutropenia now going to the cause of eosinophilia they are very particular causes of eosinophilia now eosinophilia mostly normal eosinophil count is between 2 to 6 percent the causes of increased eosinophils will be now it has uh, seen in mostly allergies okay and parasitic infection these are the two main important causes of eosinophilia so allergic diseases such as bronchial asthma your atric area rhinitis allergic rhinitis then certain skin disease such as eczema, pemphigus, then parasitic infections such as filariasis. Now, filariasis is known to cause very high eosinophil count, echinococcosis and other parasitic infection can also cause eosinophilia. Then CML, CML in this there is increase in both your eosinophils and basophils, Loeffler syndrome. Uh, there is tropical eosinophilia, then hyper eosinophilic syndrome. These are all the causes of eosinophilia. Basophilia. Now, basophilia in this, the, you should remember the normal count of the basophil is 1 to 0 to 1 person. That means if you count around 100 WBCs, okay, you are very un, it is very unlikely for you to find any basophil. You will find one basophil in a normal person or maximum two basophils in a normal person. The normal count is 0 to 1 only. So, if it is more than 100 microliter per microliter, that is absolute count, or it is more than 2 or 3, then you have to think on certain causes such as CML. Now, certain myeloproliferative, chronic myeloproliferative disorders. In chronic myeloproliferative disorders, you will see there is increase in basophil, such as CML, is one of the chronic myeloproliferative disorders, polycythemia vera then myxedema okay that is your uh, problem with the thyroid hormone okay there is a decrease in the it's hypothyroidism then food or drug allergy so these are certain causes of basophilia then going to lymphocytosis now lymphocyte normally lymphocytes are 20 to 40 percent so after neutrophils lymphocytes are the most common ones now this uh, which we are range we are talking about okay we are talking about 40 to 75 percent in a neutrophils in an adult now this is the adult range okay you should remember this is the adult range in adults 20 to 40 percent lymphocytes are normal okay in children the their count is cert, uh, lymphocytes are certainly high okay so this is the adult count which you are talking about now the causes of lymphocytosis is certain viral infection of viral infections are very known to cause uh, lymphocytosis such as your uh, normal influenza okay mumps varicella uh, rubella then uh, your bacterial infection such as tb typhoid now tb typhoid if you come uh, you notice they don't increase apart from they being a bacterial infection they don't increase the neutrophil count so they are known to call increase the lymphocyte count their tb typhoid produces then certain leukemia such as all acute lymphoblastic leukemia chronic lymphoblastic leukemia then uh, uh, lymphomas they can also increase the lymphocyte count now going to monocytosis monocyte are around 2 to 10 percent in the normal peripheral blood smear they are increased in certain infections now such as tuberculosis very importantly these two infections malaria and kalasar so if you see monocytosis in a peripheral blood smear you can also search for malarial uh, parasite autoimmune diseases myeloproliferative disorders then a very uncommon association which is seen is with the ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease. So, these are the causes of all the cells which are increasing or decreasing. Now, there are certain uh, things uh, which you can see in the neutrophil, okay, certain uh, things you can see in a leukocyte which is of certain importance. First is the toxic granules. Now, this is a neutrophil, okay, but here you can see uh, the cytoplasmic granules they are very slightly they are coarser okay and they are very prominent and coarse granules are present so these are known as toxic granules so whenever the patient goes into septicemia okay very severe septicemia then toxic granules or cytoplasmic vacuolations okay in the cytoplasmic vacuolations are present these are very characteristic of severe septicemia 
then hyper segmentation hyper segmentation of the neutrophil okay you can see here the lobes of the neutrophil are increased in number so if more than 5% of neutrophils will have more than 5 lobes or you find a neutrophil having 6 or 7 lobe it is characteristic of hyper segmentation of neutrophil now it has its own importance it is important in case of megaloblastic anemia that is the b12 and folic acid deficiency so it is one of the early signs which you see in a megaloblastic anemia that is the hyper segmentation of the neutrophil then there is certain when you ever come across any report you can see in some patient it will be written that there is shift to left present so what does that mean so whenever you understand about the neutrophil how the mature neutrophil is found there is myeloblast then there is promyelocyte then it goes to myelocyte then metamyelocyte then you have your band forms and neutrophil now when there is very severe infection the shift occurs towards the left okay then you can in the peripheral blood smear you will some see some of the metamyelocyte you will see some of the band forms you will see some of the myelocytes also so here you can see this is a metamyelocyte this is a myelocyte so this shift is again characteristic of any severe infection so in septicemia the additional findings which you can see okay will be toxic granules you can have cytoplasmic vacuolation and you can have shift to left so these are characteristic that patient is going uh, to a bad situation so this was all about the wbc examination you can ask your query in the comment box do like share and subscribe to this channel if you like these videos thanks for watching this video